Hi everybody, this is Gary and in this video we're going to look into how we can find out what files a specific process interacts with. For that I will use the process monitor tool from the CC internals suite. There are lots of different use cases why you would want to know which files a process works with. For instance, in my case I was doing a security assessment of a desktop application. I knew that it stores data locally, so I wanted to find out where the data is stored on the disk to be able to uh, analyze whether it's stored securely or not. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But you could use the same method to analyze where a malware dropper stores the extracted or downloaded payload on the disk to analyze that further. For this video, I will use the desktop application called the Portable Kanban. Note, this is not the app I mentioned earlier. I actually use Portable Kanban because I'm generally a huge fan of Kanban to organize my, my work and for everything else I use Trello, but for confidential work related stuff I didn't want to use a cloud solution, so instead I use this simple tool. As you can see it is a very simple Kanban tool. I have columns and I can create tasks on, in these columns, then I can move the tasks around. My test scenario is the same what I mentioned earlier. So I want to find out where the contents of my Kanban table are stored on disk, so I can analyze the database further. All right, first I will close the tool and start the process monitor. As I mentioned, the process monitor is part of the sysinternals tools. So if you don't know sysinternals, it's definitely something you want to check out um, because it contains a lot of very useful tools for Windows. I use the Flare VM. Uh, which already has Process Monitor or Procmon installed. So let's navigate there and start a tool. So Process Monitor basically shows real-time file system registry and process thread activities. As you can see, it has a simple user interface where it lists the, all the log activities. By default, for each event, it shows the time, process name, process ID, what operation it was, path related to the operation, results and details. We can add more columns if necessary, but this is the default. The information collected by the tool is overwhelming. So the interesting part of using this tool is how to filter the collected information. First, I will generally stop capturing and clear the events because I'm only interested in the events that occur uh, after I start a tested application. Now we are going to set up a filter to only see the information that we are actually interested in. For that, first we need to know what's the name of the executable of Portable Kanban. So let's right click the shortcut and go to Properties. There we look for the file name in the target field, which is not surprisingly portablekanban.exe. Now let's go back to the process monitor and click the filter icon. For every filter, you need to choose a column you're filtering by. In this case, it will be the process name. With this filter, we want to make sure that we only capture the activities of the target application and not the rest of the system. Then we set a condition. Since we know the exact process name, we can just leave it on the condition is. And then in the input field, I just paste the file name. The last is that you could choose whether to include or exclude events matching these filters. We of course want to include it right now. So this filter basically means include all the events where the process name is kanban.exe. One thing I always forget and then I wonder why nothing works is to actually click the add button to add the filter to the list of filters below. If you don't click the add button, the filter will never work. All right, now let's create a second filter. We don't want to see everything that's done by the portable common, only the file interactions. So I choose to filter by operation. And then we can choose from a drop down menu which operation to filter for. First, we do a read file. Include is fine, so we add the filter. So now we should only see the read file calls done by the portable common. I save the filter and click OK. Now we can start capturing again and execute the application to see what it does. So I click capture. 
First, nothing happens, which is correct since we should only see events from the portable Kanban.exe and it's not running yet. So let's start it. Right away a bunch of events appear. As you can see, even by filtering to a very specific operation, it still returns a lot of data. But the goal of filtering is to bring down the number of events to a number which can be reviewed manually. We have 61 rows right now, which is a pretty friendly number. As you can see, it also loads all kinds of DLLs and .NET config files. We can already see something useful, that it loads a configuration file called the portable kanban.cfg. In real assessment, we would note this to review this file later. But now we are looking for the database file, which is not loaded yet, because we haven't logged in yet. So let's go to the login window and simply log in. When the Kanban table is fully loaded, we can be sure that the database file was accessed, so we can go back to the process monitor to see what was captured. Sometimes even the loaded libraries can be overwhelming, so first I create a filter to exclude all paths uh, which end with .dll, because we don't really need these uh, rows at the moment. Now we have only 44 lines to review. We spot the config file again, but then at the end we see uh, what we were looking for, a file called portablekanban.pk3. This is the database where the tasks are. Let's see it in Windows Explorer. I navigate to document slash kanban, and yes, the portablekanban.pk3 is there. With this, we reached our goal. Now, in a real assessment, you would start analyzing this file, but of course, we are not gonna do that in this video. So just to recap, we use the process monitor tool from sysinternals to check where the database file is located for the portable Kanban. For that, I created three filters. One to capture the events only from portable Kanban, another to capture only read file operations, and the third to exclude DLS. This way we could filter our results down to 44 lines, which was pretty easy to analyze manually. All right, that's pretty much it. If you have any other examples where you would use this technique, then let us know in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more coming, then please like it or subscribe to the channel or both. I was Gary Rewey and thanks for watching and of course, happy hacking.